Hey guys, it's Terry here from Money Matters for Everybody, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, TJ. Hello. You want to tell them where you're from? I'm from TJ's Lawns and Landscapes. Excellent. So TJ is our first family entrepreneur, uh, immediate family entrepreneur, right? So well yep. done. But today we're going to talk about uh, a conversation that we had in the car this week about long-term investing. Do you want to give our viewers a little bit of an overview of how that conversation went? Yeah, so basically we were in the car and I was talking about how like, well, we were talking about long-term investing and how I used to think my mom was crazy. Well, I was still a little bit young, but she, I thought she was crazy when she was saying like, you should be investing as young as possible. As soon as you and, start making um, money. Yeah, and because at the time, I mean, I was making the money. I, at that point, I think I was giving it still, but um, I wanted the rest to basically spend. I didn't want to have to split it into anything else. I, yeah. I just wanted to yeah. spend the rest. So we previously talked about, actually had a video a couple weeks ago talking about how we paid our children for chores from a very young age, from the time that they could understand instructions and directions. And then we taught them how to divide their earnings into categories of giving your 10% uh, and then splitting the remaining 90% between saving and spending. And you could save as much as you want, um, but the purpose of saving was to kind of delay spending, right? Yep. And then shortly thereafter, a couple years later, uh, we talked about to our to both of the boys about investing your earnings. So when TJ started working, um, not just working for chores, but actually working for, then we started talking to TJ about using some of that money to invest in the long term. Hence, I think that's the part where you thought that I was crazy, right? Yeah. Because, um, and I think I had explained it. What child understands long term investing? What child understands like? A little bit of temporary pain for something that you're gonna get 40 50 60 years down the road yeah especially when you're younger you're focused on like the next like two minutes today not like <laughs> 40 years yeah today tomorrow this week this month all right so do you want to tell people what changed like how how you came to feel how you feel as though you came to learn and understand how long-term investing works or why you should do it so basically I feel like I changed my mind in thinking that she's crazy and I wanted to invest because for long term because I saw some people in my life where they are older and they live from social security check to social security check because they didn't plan for retirement, they didn't save for it um, and I don't want to live like that. I want to basically have once I retire enough money to live comfortably and with the money that I've got okay. and not have to rely on social security checks and perfect yeah I think the average social security if I heard correctly is about 40 percent of like your final pay so whatever you're earning when you go into retirement the social security will pay you out 40 percent which I have my opinions about that, so we're not going to go there. But <laughs> um, but you want more for your family, and you want to leave a legacy, and you probably have grandchildren, and you want to be able to take them on vacations. Um, so I think that that's, that's the key, right? Yep. Cool. All right. Anything else that helped you learn? Well, also, I used to... It's not really quite easy to understand when people are saying, like, 10%, 14%, like, all those percentages... Especially when you're young, because you're like, okay, I'm going to put like a couple hundred bucks in, but it's going to grow by 10%, but like, you don't get that number when... You don't understand compounding interest and how that really... Yeah, began. when... So like you put, put in $100, into a, yeah. A calculator where it showed um, you put a certain amount in at a certain age, how much it will grow in by the time you retire and when it's shown in the amount of money that you'll have at that age it's a lot easier to understand than just 
percentages. Absolutely. I think then the opportunity cost, I think that that's what we call, we call that opportunity cost because what you're going to, you're going to, you have a hundred dollars today and you're either going to use it today for something that you think is worth a hundred dollars or you're going to invest that hundred dollars and in 40 years at 10% average rate of return, I should have this memorized, I don't by now, um, what that would equal then. It would be a couple thousand I'm sure by then, but just kind of you have to consider the costs. And that doesn't mean, well, we'll go into later detail in other videos about how you balance that out. Uh, you wanna tell our viewers what your goal, what you're currently working on for your goal? My goal is to have 100,000 in investments for um, long-term investments by the time I'm 21. Um, and yep. that should be a, reachable goal. Perfect. It should be achievable, right? Yeah. So, um, and we previously talked about how TJ doesn't intend to go to college at this point in time and how he will work and save as much as possible. That $100,000 managed appropriately over the next 40, 50 years will add up to well over $5 million, well over at the very low end. Um, the higher end, it could be 10 or 15. And that's some pretty good take home pay after that. What do you think? Yep. <laughs> um, but I think the take home message here is time. That's your biggest advantage. Um, the thing that works in your favor the most is time. So teaching our children to start taking a portion of their, their earnings and investing that every time they get paid and showing them what that looks like. And you know, now we have these portals, so you can just log on to the portal and, and see how your investments are doing. Don't look at it now, but over time, you can definitely um, see the value of that. And I think in the investment calculators, you can see how small the contribution is versus the growth over time. And so TJ, if he meets the challenge of putting $100,000 away by the time he's 21 and just stops, doesn't put another dime in, will be leaps and bounds ahead of somebody who starts at 10 years later and starts putting, what, $100, $200, $300 a month away, TJ will still be ahead by the time he retires. So just because of time, time and compounding interest. So, all right, anything else you'd like to share? Nope. Great, so I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I hope that it inspired you that you can raise money smart kids in today's day and age, right? Yep. You can raise money smart kids. You wanna encourage our viewers that they can raise money smart kids? Yeah, I'm pretty money smart because I was raised by a money smart mom, so. Mom wasn't so money smart until <laughs> later in life. But what do we say, we forgot. Do as I say, not as I did, yep. right? Because my lesson learned is your advantage if you, um, if you learn from what our mistake was, not investing early enough and often enough, um, I, I think that there's a lot of value in that. So. Yep. Cool. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>